Hello and welcome back to the Cozy Club, my friends. My name is Cozy Gamer and it is a beautiful day for some DSA. Today we're going to be doing another step towards the complete tower guide. We've done tower three if you haven't already or if you're stuck on tower three, you can find my tower three video located right here. But today is all about tower four. Now tower three is much more of a roadblock compared to tower four and I myself was actually able to beat tower four quite easily because I had the right downtown and wild characters. However, if you don't have the right roster, we're going to go through every enemy today and every character that I recommend to help you get through Tower 4 as easy as possible. So as you guys know, I've already beaten Tower 4 and I can't go back and play it. So a big thank you to Artemis for getting me some of the Tower 4 footage. I had some left of my own footage, but again, thank you for getting me that. And also, just like last video, thank you so much to Vizsla for providing these amazing graphics for this Tower 4 video. If you guys want to see graphics just like this, you can go in the description below and you can join the DSA resources server. They have a lot of different graphics and they support different content creators. Or you can go ahead and go into the uh, Cozy Club server and we're going to have them in there as well. Again, thank you Vizsla and let's get right to the video. I know you guys are looking around and some things have changed. Where did the precious shelves go? They're gone. They're gone for good. We've moved on to a new studio look, guys. I'm going to be adjusting it week over week till we get the right look, but hopefully you guys like the new ambiance of the Cozy Club. All right, guys, let's go hop into Tower 4, starting with the requirements and Floor 1. Now, you want to beat Tower 4 because you're going to unlock the precious Splash Mountain spell, which was a lot better before it got nerfed. However, it's still a very good spell and effective to use in PvP. Essentially, the main use of it now is it's going to be extending those debuffs on the enemy team. So for lots of kingdom teams, debuff heavy teams, Splash Mountain is going to be the way to go. Now, again, I did come up with this complete strategic guide on what downtown and what wild characters you should use. And we did have a nice graphic put together for this. But with hero getting released, guys, if you get hero, you're going to be able to blast through Tower 4. I've seen combinations of Violet and Hero kind of cheese their way through Tower 4, but assuming that you don't have Hero as he just came out, we're going to focus on these other characters. But again, Hero Mata is an amazing tune, not only obviously in Towers of Endurance to get through Tower 4 and Tower 5, but I recommend getting him for PvP. He makes every team better, and we're going to have some videos coming out later this week talking just about that. Now, looking at some other characters in here, again, you're going to be using wild and downtown characters. Now, luckily, your downtown characters can kind of carry the load. You can only use up to two wilds, and, you know, Simba is pretty good. We've got some other wilds on here that we'll take a look at in just a second. If you see them with a golden border behind the name, that means that character is extra good, extra helpful in Tower 4. So focus those characters if you're having trouble getting through it. Each one does something different to make getting through Tower 4 a little bit easier. Now we've talked about him before, but the Doc, Dr. Facilia is the Tower King. Once you guys get low health on your characters, he's gonna heal them up anytime anyone dies. And a pro tip, if you have Bucket of Soldiers or Cauldron, anytime those die as well, you're gonna heal up your team. So that's an easy way to kind of do quick cheese heals to get through the tower levels. Now you should be using Dr. Facilier, but if you want to get through it and you don't have them, some other great options is the following. First of all, the Incredibles just came back to DSA and as a squad, it can really help you get through tower four. Bob does a lot of the tanking while Dash obviously does the damage dealing. But the Onward duo, Ian and Barley, can make getting through this tower a simple breeze. They, they just go really well together overall. They can dish out big damage and they get rid of taunts Arley is an incredible tune overall, and they can help you in your experience through Tower 4 a lot easier. Now, for Wilds, the ones I'm going to suggest is Kristoff, Scar, Elsa, and Sven. Now, Kristoff and Sven, you should already be farming and going after, and them two as a pair make this tower a lot easier, guys. You have a lot of different options compared to Tower 3. Oceanic's a lot more restrictive than Wild and Downtown. You should already have a lot of these in your roster. If you're finding trouble getting through the tower, it mainly just means you need to level them up just a bit. But those are gonna be the main wilds I recommend. And then of course, Dash and Zerg are both powerful tunes that are gonna wipe out the enemy quite quickly. So when you're going for Zerg anyway, you should have these Downtown villains farmed and use them just in this event to be able to get through Tower 4. Now, if you don't have the Golden Borders, I suggest going after Syndrome and Buzz again as they can stun, they really help get through the waves. If you're fighting kind of a tougher opponent, we'll talk about some of the tougher enemies. You can stun them, slow down their progress, or Judy's also a great unit to put slow out on the field, do some heavy damage. And if you have Judy laying around, she's great 
as well for this exact floor. Simba and Scar are a great duo for Tower 4. Scar's got the hyenas, and he's just an incredible overall versatile unit. And Simba can take a lot of the hits from the enemies. So together, if you have them both, you plug them with a couple of downtown heroes and you should get right through the tower. Also for this guy, we've added the top spells. So obviously I think that you guys should get Peak Shadow. You know when you combine that with a doctor, you're gonna be able to cheese through a lot of this tower. Golden Hammer did get nerfed, but it can still help out with the downtown hero section. To use that if you need to heal up your people or if you need to get revived going, you get undefeatable and you kind of have two lives on an enemy. Also, I know it hasn't been back for a long time, my friends, but Toy Soldiers, Bucket of Soldiers, is going to be the way to go to get through these enemies a lot faster and lay out a lot more damage, especially paired with Merida. She's already using her basic a ton. And with Bucket of Soldiers, you're going to be able to blow through this. Now, I'm going to remind you guys this in every single tower video. If you lost a lot of health on your key wild or downtown heroes, don't just beat the level and go into the next. Go ahead, hit that forfeit button, go right into the battle, spend a couple extra minutes to make it a lot easier down the road. So on floor one through three, you're gonna need one wild, and then three on, you're gonna need two wild. So just like the oceanic uh, characters on tower three, you can use your weaker wilds at first to kind of take those blows. Again, we're gonna be going through floor one through three here in a second. And honestly, these floors you can really just wipe through. These are really easy floors. But let's start, let's take a look at them, starting with the monkey and the hyena, guys. Again, if you can't beat this floor, you really should just stop the video. <laughs> this floor is as easy as it gets. You're gonna have the log monkeys, which they can heal. They can give an AOE critical chance up, and then they can also give speed turn meter gain. And then you have the hyenas that do a little bit of damage, and then they taunt. So it's not much. The hyenas can give themselves offense up, and if they have that, and if they hit one of your characters, it can do a little bit of damage, but again, this floor should be a breeze, so wipe through it and on to floor two. For my dodgeball fans, we've got the Vicious Cobras. So floor two, it's a little bit tougher. You've got the Vicious Cobras, and then you're going to be seeing these in Tower 5, so get ready for these guys. Now, the Grasshoppers are going to be taunting, and they can put out some blind, but the Vicious Cobras are the high damage. You want to kind of prioritize putting the charm, putting the hurt on the Cobras, you can leave the grasshoppers alone for the most part. Go after the cobras because they can hit some of your wild characters for some big damage. I know I've seen scars get wiped out or some of the other wild characters, and then you can't have them for later floors. So again, restart if you get hard, but focus the cobras. So moving on to floor three, you're going to be fighting a familiar foe, and that is Mordu, guys. And if you don't know Mordu's kit, once you get him under a certain uh, health threshold, he's going to get empowered and start hitting some heavy damage. He's got a stun and a taunt as well. So be careful, he's gonna be stunning your characters. But get used to that on tower four. There's a lot of stunning enemies on this tower. So you're just gonna have to learn to get around the stuns. Hero can help with that again, as we talked about, as his upgrade ability can cleanse stun. But looking at the enemies, you've got more do. You've got the range hyenas, which are just like the melee hyenas from the floor before, but they're gonna be throwing and be a little bit more out of range. They can give themselves offense up as well. But you're gonna have the monkeys on this floor and you can leave them alone. I would target more do heavy. Put your debuffs, put your charm, anything on more do. Keep them at bay. And then if you're having struggle and when you get him enraged or empowered and he goes after your best tunes, make sure that you kind of have him in kill shot range. So if you have someone like Zerg, save Zerg vision until Mordu's almost dead or halfway right before empowered and then wipe him out in one go. Or you can stun Mordu, charm him again and go after the hyenas first, focus them, Again, you can leave the monkeys and then get more dude down. Y'all, the hyenas can hit high damage, so be careful if you do take too much. Make sure you just back down and restart and get things going again. And you should be on your way to floor four. All right, so we're on floor four, and this is going to be the first one where you need two wild characters. Before this, you should not have been using more than two wild characters to get through the early floors. Essentially, what I've done is get the wild characters that you don't use a lot. Go through floor one through three. And now bring out the big guns, the wild characters that you like a lot, whether it's Finn and Kristoff or whoever it might be. Bring them out from floor four and on because you're going to be taking on Hopper, two grasshoppers, and then vicious cobras. Now, Hopper doesn't do too much and you can ignore him for the most part. If you want to do the control method like we did on Mordu, that's fine. But I would hyper focus the vicious cobras. Those are going to be the ones that are laying out the bigger damage on your unit. So focus the cobras, then move to Hopper, wipe out the grasshoppers, and let's get to floor five. All right, so we're on floor five, and this is where things start to get annoying and a lot harder. You've got the rams that you're gonna be facing, and these guys stun and they hit high damage. And don't look at them and think, it's just a little sheep. It's not gonna do much. They lay out the hurt on your team. 
And then if they weren't enough, you've got also the Dunbrock Warriors, which is from the Brave series, if you guys haven't seen it. And these guys are also going to be hitting high damage. However, they do have multiple buffs that they use. Some of the buffs that they have is Taunt, Haste, and Offense Up. These guys can lay out some big hits as well. If you are getting stuck behind the Taunts and the Rams are just destroying your team, use Barley's Guinevere. It can wipe out the Taunt and then you can move on and focus the units that you should. There's really not a high priority unit here. Both are ones you want to kill, but the Rams are the ones that require the most focus as they once they get going with their stuns, they can really cripple your entire team. This will probably be a floor that you've got to forfeit and come back in on because RNG is going to depend on who the Rams go after or if you can get a taunt off before they get going. All right, guys, we're on floor six, and that is going to be the halfway mark through this tower, guys. And it only really gets harder from here. But don't worry, once you've gotten through those rams and those billy goats, you got a couple easier floors. On this floor, we're going to be fighting Merida, who's going to be the exact same as the Toon. You can take her out pretty easily. Just focus her right when the battle begins. If she starts out with high turn meter, go back in and then kick her butt. She's pretty easy to take down before she can even get a turn off. And besides her, we've got the Dunblock Warriors, and then we've got the Trolls that you've seen from the Frozen Kristoff, which you can summon yourself, get a little troll on troll action. The Trolls aren't going to do anything. Concentrate Merida, then concentrate the Dunblock, and then go after the Trolls to finish off Floor 7. All right, so we're on Floor 7, and there's a little bit of a different mechanic on this floor. The Bone Hyena is going to go first, and they're going to put a decent amount of damage nothing too crazy on your characters after that it's as normal and you've got the other hyenas to worry about now this one's tough because all the hyenas hit hard and which one to prioritize isn't very easy to figure out i would go after the range hyenas as they're gonna hit the hardest and do the most damage to your characters take them out first then go after maybe the bone hyena and then finish off the attacking melee hyenas this is a tough floor that you might have to redo a couple of times to get the right rng because these guys can hit hard if you're having a hard time with this floor put in some of the squisher wilds that you do have available let them take this damage and then move on and go to the next floor unlike oceanic you should have plenty of wild characters that you can plug and play in there and get to that next floor while having your main core team alive for the later even harder floor all right so if you got through floor seven this one should be a little bit easier you're going to be fighting four of the weasels guys and don't underestimate these little guys can do a little bit of damage they have a, a good amount of damage that they can put out and the trolls well they're going to be healing and being a troll so go after the weasels take them down take your time to get this floor right and we're going to move and jump on to floor nine the floor nine is going to separate the weak from the strong it's a lot tougher because scar is here and he's got his hyenas from lion king to help him out now you've learned and you've tackled Plenty of hyenas up to this point so you should know what each of them do i would go and put charm just like we kind of tame more do down let's put some taming on scar let's make sure that he's not going to do anything crazy get a stun get a charm on scar and then move on to those range hyenas and then after that focus the melee hyenas again scar can summon even more so it's going to get a little bit overwhelming but make sure you keep scar at bay tame him up kill his friends and then kill Scar. Floor number 10, and we've got two more left. This floor is gonna be your first two-wave floor, and you're gonna be battling the Weasels, and you're gonna be battling the Rams and the Grasshoppers. I'd prioritize going after the Rams first, as again, they got that annoying stun. The Weasels do hurt, but they're not gonna stun lock your character, so focus the Rams, put everything you've got towards them. Make sure you save some of your AoEs for the later waves. You don't wanna put everything out there on the first wave, and then be caught, you know, really with your pants down, not being able to do anything for wave number two so attack the rams then go after the weasels the grasshopper is going to taunt and just sit there being a grasshopper kill the rams the weasels and let's get to floor 11. we've only got two more floors we got to keep our guys alive and this one isn't going to be the easiest as we've got another two wave tower floor to go through so you're going to have some monkeys and hyenas and make sure you concentrate the hyenas leave the monkeys alone they're just going to wave their big palm you're going to be okay and then you're going to be going versus the Vicious Cobras, which we've talked about. You've got now the Ranged Hyenas and the Vicious Cobras. It's a lot of high damage coming at you. But if you got the right downtown characters, if you got the ones that we're mentioning here, you should be able to get through this floor, no problem. Again, the thing with RNG is when you go into floor one, you might have great RNG, but you beat that, you go to floor two, and then all of a sudden everybody has high turn meter and you get your butt kicked. Well, guess what? You need good RNG for both floors. So take your time. Focus the guys you need to focus. And then let's move on to the last floor of Tower 4. And that's a Dr. Seuss book right there. 
All right, Colors of the Wind. It's the last floor of Tower 4, and it's going to be a Pocahontas battle to the death. You're going to be fighting Pocahontas, the Dunblock brothers. You're going to be fighting the hyenas and the grasshoppers and some trolls for good measure, guys. You're going to be starting out going against the hyenas and some grasshoppers. And just focus those hyenas. Move on to that second wave. Make sure you've got good RNG and put everything you got into Pocahontas. The Dunblock brothers are going to be there to taunt and try to distract you. All right, now take the boss of Tower 4 down in Pocahontas and you have earned yourself some good currency and Splash Mountain, which we've talked about it. Splash Mountain is a nice spell to put into the pool of spells. At this point, I would be unlocking the spell packs. Don't go after any individual spell. As you guys know, they're nerfing and buffing the spells, which, you know, you can agree or disagree with. But go after the spell packs. That way you kind of earn everything under one umbrella and you make sure that you have spells that are going to last. Now, once you've beaten this as same as the last video, let me know in the comments below. Cozy, I beat Tower 4, guys. Let's celebrate together. If you haven't already, you can catch me on Twitch on Tuesday, Thursday, Fridays, and Sundays. We have a great time. We talk strategy. We have fun. We do trivia. It's a great time. You can find that in the description below. And again, if you want to join the Discord to talk to like-minded people talking about DSA, talking about every single thing that you can imagine within this game, theory crafting, tower talk, you name it. You can find that in the description below to join the Cozy Club. If you guys like what you saw, we just hit 4,000 subs, so hit that subscribe button. Join the Cozy Club. We'll be having the Tower 5 guide, which is going to be a doozy, but we're gonna have the Tower 5 guide probably next week walking through every floor, every enemy, every team change to get through the hardest PvE content in Disney Sorcerer's Arena. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and it helped you get through Tower 4. Thank you so much for stopping by the Cozy Club. And until next time, stay cozy, my friends.